very warm welcome to the SHN talk show. As you all know that our talk show is all about introducing you all to the strong humans in and around us who have learned so many life lessons through their own personal and professional experiences. And they are the right people who can help us become a strong human. So like every episode, we bring in the best people uh, from the industry, from different facets of uh, careers and life who can help us with their journey, their stories, and can inspire us to become uh, stronger, to become better. I am April Strong, a talk show host at Strong Human Network. I'm also a career coach working, uh, you know, helping working women professionals scale up the COVID ladder so they can 10x their personal and professional successes. Now, when it comes to being a strong human, I think we all have a slightly different definition of who a strong human is and what makes a person a strong human. So today, the guest that we have is just super, super special. Uh, She is Dr. Pooja Gavan. And uh, she has just won multiple, multiple, multiple awards, and especially the one award that she's won, which is the most recent, uh, which is into being a beauty pageant. She's the Mrs. India Dhalakshmi 2022. So a little about uh, Dr. Puja before we start. Hi, Dr. Puja. Thank you so much for being Hello. here. And, you know, I, I think the first time that I contacted you, you were, that was a time you were going through these pageants, right? You, that was a time your competition was up and running um, and you were just busy working towards <laughs> these things, right? <laughs> true, true. I mean, I, I'm, I'm often busy and okay. the busier I am, the better I feel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that, that's amazing. And that is so true with me also. I mean, when you're busy work for the right things, I think it fills you with a lot of joy, right? I agree. <laughs> so before we dig into the questions and we know more about Dr. Pooja Devan, I would uh, briefly explain you a few things about what she has done. So Dr. Pooja Devan is a multifaceted, multi-talented doctor. She is a gynecologist specializing in infertility, uh, test tube baby treatments, and a laparoscopic keyhole search. She is also a motivational and inspired, uh, inspirational speaker, and she has deep roots in social service. And uh, one thing that not many people might know about her is that she's also an amazing singer. Uh, She has been crowned the Girl Lakshmi Mrs. India 2022, Mrs. Stunner India 2022, and the most recent has been Mrs. India Kalinga Sundari 2022. Dr. Pooja Dhawan is a consultant at Apollo Fertility Speciality Centers for South Delhi and Noida. She is the founder of Akardi Life and Healthcare Service, catering primarily to women. She's an active practitioner, having about 20 years of experience. And she um, finds peace in music. She says that music is medicine to her mind. And she uses music, meditation, and a lot of these techniques of counseling and music therapy, especially, to uh, help her patients and everybody who comes in contact with her. She is a She's trained in classical music and armed with multiple medical degrees. Um, she collaborates these both, both of these worlds of science and art and, you know, medical sciences together and brings in something extraordinarily um, valuable for the people she is in touch with. Her musical journey includes the re- release of soulful devotional spiritual songs, international release of the music album Sumirani, under the prestigious label of Times Music. She's a Hindustani classical singer, armed with a bachelor's in music. And she has won several, several, several awards. A few of them I would like to name here. Leader in the Women and Child Healthcare Initiative at CSR Health Impact Awards. Indian Legend Awards, Woman Leadership in Medical Science Award. She has been awarded as the best medical practitioner. She has been awarded as the most trusted infertility specialist and a gynecologist. 
She's a corporate achiever at National Leadership and Excellence Award. So the list keeps going. And I think a little more about her journey is what we would be here to learn about. So now I will um, have her fill in the gaps that uh, maybe I haven't mentioned. So um, Dr. Pooja Devan, if you could you know, add a little bit more to that and then we can just get started. April, that was such an elaborate introduction. What more do I have to add? I can, <laughs> I can add more. I mean, as they say, there are many jewels in the crown. You have made me sit here with the crown. <laughs> exactly. But, but Dr. Uh, Devan, the first thing that I would like to add is that when I saw your profile, you know, I was so inspired. You know, the first question that came to my mind is, how are you managing to do so many things at a time and balancing with a family, balancing everything that you have going on in your life? Because, you know, see, um, like we say, we only see a person, what he is able to do in his career. But there are so many sides of a person's life that goes unnoticed or that the world is not able to see. And you have a contribution in all of those areas as well. And you have to take everything along. So, yeah, you know, kudos to you on that. And I'm so, so, so impressed with that. And, um, yeah, best of luck for your future journey. But today, one thing that I want to know first is your journey and what happened with the Mrs. India Kalinga Sundari and the Mrs. India Gramalakshmi. How did that journey happen and how did that make you feel? And sometimes things just walk up to you and opportunities just walk up to you. Never did I ever envision that there would be a beauty pageant that I would contest. If that be so, it should have been in my younger days. And I should have been a contestant for, and aspirational for, uh, for the title of Miss India. Well, I always knew that Mrs. India existed, not that I married so early that I could not have contested for Miss India, but I was a hook, line and sinker into my professional career. And so it is as on date as well. But you know, as you uh, carry on in your life, but so many things come by and you can be a spectator if you wish to and be a part of the audience. You could also envision to take up a challenge, a challenge not to prove to others, but an opportunity which you may not seek later. And you, you may have that pass by because an age uh, parameter just went by. And so when it walked up to me, and both of them, would you believe it, came to me precisely 15, 20 days before the pageant. Two, cons two consecutive days, I got phone calls from uh, the respective uh, offices that, um, we, that this is an opportunity and would you be keen to participate? And I, I looked into my own self and I was very hesitant. I discussed with my family members, not just seeking their support, but also wondering exactly what am I doing? And I, I did get support and I was told to put my best foot forward and not resent if I were not to be successful. And typical uh, medicals that we are, we, we take up everything with an intent that we have to pass the exam. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, so everything for me is like, it's not just a milestone, for everything for me is an assessment. Mm -hmm. And an exam, because that's how I am attuned and not uh, about the result in the eyes of others. But every result has always been in my eyes. So, um, and this is, you know, when we talk of beauty and we talk about patterns, it is a, a strong enough component of your inner self as well as your outer beauty. So uh, the first thing I had to tell myself was, hang on. You need to sleep better. <laughs> you need to exercise more. You need to calm down. You need to appear relaxed. You need to enjoy this experience and not just take it as a, you know, head-on challenge that you could have sleepless nights and read through the night and go and write an exam the next day. This is this is about living that journey. And when I embarked upon it, uh, the first uh, pageant which came through was uh, Mrs. India Kalinga Sundri 2022 at uh, Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha. And uh, just the, the day uh, next, I uh, was 
kick and into the other pageant and you know it's not a one day event it's a, a three to five day journey uh, which each pageant uh, envisages and uh, I, it was wonderful I enjoyed um, both the times it was a surprise to me that I could be there in the finals I could be there in the shortlisted and I could answer and I could present myself and um, it's even more uh, heartening when you invite your family members for the mm-hmm. grand finale and it's an it's it's a test for yourself and something that you don't know about your own self let alone the audience or the or your own family and as it um, uncovered layer by layer um, it uh, fortified my self belief in my own self not about my not about the beauty but about uh, a pageant being so holistic because they that assess you from various aspects uh, how you talk how you walk how your conduct is what are your etiquettes what are your social mannerisms how do you bond with the people around you how do you uh, you know uh, keep the competitiveness um, the negative aspect of it at bay how do you um, ref- how do you uh, show you your conduct how whether you are punctual how well do you dress how well do you um you know conduct yourself uh, how do you speak uh, what what are your enunciations what is you know your pronunciation what is the content you speak how do you present yourself and it's not just about wearing the dress and walking on the ramp so it was quite an eye opener for myself wow wow amazing and so so uh, dr devan was this more like your first pageant or how how was it my first ever my first ever um presence in a fashion show or on a ramp or on a pageant ever oh my it god is not it- there on my list it was not there in my dreams it was not there in my bucket list yes i did win uh, the first one and as i ventured into grah lakshmi mrs india 2022 i was crowned mrs stunner india uh, as uh, their subtitle crowning and then it progressed went on and i backed the crown and i got mrs india grah lakshmi 2022 so now i have this big crown and i have two smaller ones <laughs> and a multitude of sashes <laughs> well this is amazing so this was the first time you ever participated yeah. and you came back winning uh, you know three titles so yeah 2022 has been amazing for you i must say yes of course it has so, brought in, it has brought in a self belief it has uh, reboosted my uh, own uh, self it has rekindled some spirits within me <laughs> wow that's amazing and the way you're wearing it and like, you know your grace uh, that comes along so naturally that it is really hard for me to believe that this was the first time but yeah when i read your profile that that did uh, come to my mind that it must have been a shift for you from where you come and what you've been doing for all these years and that's a great shift right that, that's a great uh, what do you say um direction uh, it's it's like just you're still doing what you're doing but you're exploring something new and then you figure out that wow this is something that i love too so yeah yeah that's, could you that's... believe it i was asked to demonstrate a ramp walk okay the moment i walked the choreographer commented are you a doctor i said yeah no oh. one you walk like this <laughs> Oh my god are you serious <laughs> Oh my god oh my god wow wow <laughs> that that that's so surprising right i mean yeah there must be something to it that that made I, it I I I told myself i still have 2 3 days to go i'll copy <laughs> <laughs> and i did it yeah yeah and, and you did i learn i google i'll do something <laughs> <laughs> awesome 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 So yeah that that's like the uh, go getter in you uh, right dr devan true <clears throat> all right so dr devan the first question i have for you um is can you share your inspirational journey with us and who has been your inspiration 
whether it's your professional life or your personal life? My aspiration has always been to leave behind some footprint in this impressionable world. Uh, it, it started not today and not yesterday. I would say it's a journey that I need to tread with more emphasis and more impactfulness now onwards in my future life. I, I did exactly what a middle class uh, family's daughter would do. I was told this is a profession. I worked on that profession. I was happy with my profession. I grew in that profession. That was my medical profession. Uh, I did specialize, as you said, in IVFs and laparoscopic surgery. And this is not a short journey by itself. I went on to do a PhD in medical sciences and uh, bagged a uh, uh, hospital administration post-graduation, a medical law postgraduate diploma, a national accreditation board of hospitals, internal auditor, um, assessor status, and so on and so forth. I bagged the most prestigious fellow of the Royal College uh, at a very young age and went on just purely into medical journey. But as you know, when we are kids, you know, their life is much more holistic. We are, we are pushed uh, and we are told to explore our interests in various fields, be it be public speaking, be it be music or dance or whatever. So for me, it was predominantly music. And that carried on with me through my school into my medical college till I uh, participated in Antakshari, uh, close-up Antakshari, which was conducted by Anu Kapoor in those days. And we represented, again, the medical college and competed with medical engineering MBA colleges. You know, it was a specific um, a competition, but it never left me. I, I continued to sing. I continued to uh, perform. And as they would say, here's a doctor who likes to sing in parties. And that's how it was. And uh, I wasn't satisfied with it. And I happened to find an opportunity where I made an album. I, got, I presented it to Times Music, a very prestigious label, and they took it up. So um, then I, I saw that there is, there is a life which is beyond the subtleness, sincerity, hard work, dedication of my medical profession. And I was not leaving it. Yeah. I was 15, 20 years deep into it. Questions keep arising. Have I left this to yeah. embrace another thing? And I say, would you give up your left hand to shake up, shake hands with your right? I'd rather embrace with both my arms open. And so I happen to uh, see this journey of my own self from a medical doctor heading institutions for 10 odd years then getting into uh, professional music by chance, because I anyways used to sing. And I say, people will listen to you only if you're good, not because you're a doctor and not because you got a recommendation. This is an art form. Then I was always speaking uh, on uh, various platforms, particularly medical forums and addressing the community. The content had to go beyond medicine as well. So when yeah. Corona came up, my content was stress therapy, music therapy, mindfulness, um, digital uh, detox. And of course, I was delivering hardcore medical shows. I had a weekly show uh, in Grihe Lakshmi magazine. Um, it was a show which went on every week. It, then I had uh, a show on GOTV, the Omnicurist channel called Stronger Healthier Everyday She. Then I did Legends of Medicine, where I was interviewing the leaders and legends in medicine who were Padma Awardees and above, you know. Uh, and I explored all those aspects. I was anchoring shows any which ways. I was speaking on so many shows. And that's how the journey to motivational speaking, inspirational speaking, which was already existent within me, got stamped. And when you do work selflessly for the society, that's when social service comes into being. If you selflessly do around 500 to 600 shows in a year, you open your telephone services, your email services, and you say, I'm open to any question that you wish to ask me free of cost medically. You are doing social service. You may have the free time for it. You may not have the intent. You may not have the 
uh, tenacity to continue. You may not have the uh, diligence to just continue in a field. And that's when um, I was recognized by Congress Party, the NOIDA division and facilitated. Uh, some people walked into my home wanting to make a documentary film on me and my work. Uh, this is a lot of records, India's first video book series, and I featured in their health records. I was stunned when Maharashtra government uh, gave me my Mumbai Ratna Award for my social service in the field of health. It, it just happened. I, I received some 18 odd awards in a year in various fields, but these are the ones which I received solely for my social service. And Swavalambika Award as well by an organization in Constitution Club of India, and that was for my work. And that's how I happen to even connect with Strong Human Network and your first women summit um, last to last year in uh, on International Women's Day. I was the uh, guest of honor and keynote address speaker. So I explored uh, the rough seas, the um, unembarked territories with sincerity. And uh, as an amalgam of all these things came up and if you're rewarded for your social work, you realize, oh, did I really venture into social service? When did oh. I become a social worker? But then probably this is what adds on. And with these four things coming to me, I was anyways heavily into academics. I was teaching, I was researching, I had postgraduate students. And one fine day I become, became a junk professor of a central university in uh, India. And so that's another thing which came into my kitty and it kept adding. And then you can see the pageant. I mean, I would rather not shy away from something. I'd rather do something. Wow. That and is it's okay. It's okay to risk. It's okay to explore. It's okay to um, lose your confidence. It's okay to stumble, but it's not okay not to try. Right. Wow, and, and you, you put it so beautifully, especially also the part where uh, people saw you do so many things and were surprised and wanted to know if you still want to continue practicing as a doctor. I am. Wanna, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I mean, this is a question which comes to me every day. I, I just signed a contract today and um, I was given the oft remark. Well, it's going to be very common with you for us to see other aspects of you. I wondered whether that was a compliment or whether <laughs> it, it was a way to nudge me. Uh, how heavily are you into medical services? Let me share with you that my journey of medical degrees, I hold 16 odd degrees and uh, most of them are medical degrees. And uh, when, I, when I talk of my journey, I have been the lead face, head, in charge, director, whatever terminology you'd like to give. Um, starting from Max Healthcare for entire NCR, and I in, started their first IVF center. I wow. moved to Nova IVF. I was heading their division in Mumbai. I uh, went to Kokila Ben Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital, and I was their head and in charge for their IVF services. I, that's been a journey for long enough. Now I'm with Apollo Fertility. So it's a journey which which is there. I mean, I have my entire life, as they say, this is one of the professions which lasts longer than most other professions. Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. And, um, and I, I think it's a lot of hard work. If you don't true. want to give up what you are doing yeah. and you want to do more things, it's a lot of juggling, a lot of multitasking, a lot of uh, perseverance. And uh, it's okay. I'm willing to do that. Correct, correct. Wow, that's that's just um, amazing, amazing. I, I, I can see that passion uh, in everything that you're saying, you know, your passion for, I think you obviously have that passion for medical sciences, for education, but I think anything that you take up, uh, that also becomes a part of you when you just want to give you 100%. To you see, it is, like, say completely. to those in professions, to, to those in professions and to those in passions, and to those in both. Mm -hmm. So it, both when it was medicine and music. Now I'd rather reform this sentence and to say, and would like to say to those in many. <laughs> <laughs> also, when your passion blossoms into your profession or when your Absolutely. profession blossoms into your passion, you know, your values expand. Correct. 
and you want to reach out to more and give your better self and expand your horizon. That's right. as simple as that. And work doesn't feel like work, right? At that point of time, it works. It, um, you are still doing a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, but uh, you're also enjoying the whole process. And I feel that in the journey of life, we, we meet many people. In general, we, we ought to keep our conduct fairly mellowed down. We need yeah. to be genuine all the time. You do not know when you will embark upon somebody. In your journey of life, meet again and good feelings, good wishes flow by. That right. cannot be rehearsed. It cannot be artificial. It needs to be genuine. So be yeah. genuine. And you will receive a lot of love and affection. Absolutely. That's amazing. Love that. <laughs> All right. Um, so Dr. Devan, tell us about one of the moments which changed your perspective towards life. I think two, three moments changed my perspective towards life. Uh, one was when I bagged my highest medical degree in the field of gynecology way back in 2003 when I became member of the Royal College. Today is that many years later I'm fellow, upgraded to fellow. The other thing which changed my perspective was uh, the time of Corona and the yeah. immense amount of work that I did during Corona. Uh, my perspective at both times was very different. Um, in 2003 it was about Yes, I, I had a goal. I had a time limit. I managed to do it. And everything will therefore come to me easy. It didn't. Yeah. It simply didn't. And they, they said very coolly, you're overqualified underage. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Right? And uh, when it came to Corona times, everybody would say, what should we do? We can't pass our time. We've seen enough of Netflix, enough of talking on the phone, enough of sulking. I think one of the busiest times ever in my life was Corona. So these two uh, things made a lot of difference. And uh, when it came to the recent Corona phase, the COVID epidemic, I, I would love to call it an epidemic and I hope and pray it shrinks to the size of an epidemic from a pandemic. <laughs> so yes, when it came to the pandemic, I realized because times had changed, there was social media and visibility. I realized that your visibility can be a constraint. In olden days, they used to say, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. But because everything was on social media, the immense amount of visibility popped up as a constraint. Yeah. You know, because I realized that as you grow, yeah. everybody doesn't grow with you. And things can fall apart. Yeah. So the only thing which took me far was my good intent always, my selflessness always. So I could carry people with me. So these two events were major uh, change makers in my life. Amazing. Amazing. I, needed, I needed one year of pandemic post the aggressive period of pandemic for me to rest. <laughs> Oh, wow. During the pandemic, yeah, when you're saying that's exactly what I uh, remember, you know, like everybody was home, but what about anybody in the medical profession? They were, they were the, you know, they were always there, right? Always available. They were the ones who were working day and night. So yeah, I mean, um, hats off to you for that. Hats off to the medical profession for that. So directly, I, I am not a medical specialist or a pulmonologist or a critical care specialist that I would be the best person to treat people who were suffering from COVID. But then there was enough happening in terms of right. health issues for women 
uh, be it be uh, just not managing to meet a doctor, be it be an ongoing pregnancy or a miscarriage or we're planning a pregnancy or um, the, the dilemma of getting a vaccination uh, done right. while you were menstruating, a vaccination while you're pregnant. I am pregnant and there is so much infection around. Would it affect me? Should I get right. pregnant? Would it affect my newborn? And so much, so on, so forth. And Absolutely. as much as I could do general medicine. So um, people people ask me, you're a gynecologist. So what was your role? I said, I was not there in the ICU taking care of patients. But yes, I did do my bit. Absolutely. No, I understand that completely. I think every doctor had more to do at that point of time because people were worried, especially the scenarios that you just mentioned. That is so critical, right? People are so worried about uh, the things that they took for granted until that time. Now, to get pregnant is a question mark. If you're pregnant, you're much more careful and you're much more worried. So obviously, they're going to who are they going to ask? They're going to ask the doctor, right? So yeah, that that um, is very much understood actually. <coughs> So, Dr. Devan, what kind of challenges did you face in your life and how did you overcome them? So, you have done so many things in your life. So, you know, what were the major challenges that you remember, whether it's through your education or your work profession? You know, there are extraneous and internal challenges. Extraneous challenges are challenges which I would rather stand up, face, ward off. But then there are internal challenges which happen solely inside of you. And those are the questions which come from within you. And they are the questions which are more difficult and more challenging for me to answer. What am I doing in my life? Does it lead to any plausible answer? Do I justify my existence um, do I manage to conduct myself the way I ought to if I'm blessed with all these things and then there is always a challenge where you ask your own self is my win a failure or my failure is a win wow so these are the internal challenges which have always um, stood there right in front of me in my conscience and my subconscious, which I find more challenging to answer. And the answer always lies within you. You have to question yourself and you will find your answer. You have to do the right deeds for you to find the answer. The extraneous world is just the extraneous world. Correct. Wow. Um, you, you have a very beautiful style of um, putting your thoughts across. I really love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just, just love that. You know, you have a very calm and composed um, way of talking. And also the way you put your words together. It's just beautiful. As a little girl, I used to rattle off at a speed and an RPM which was faster than the five number switch of the, um, you know, rotation of a ceiling fan. And it was like, dheere bolo, dheere bolo, pause, take a oh, breath. Oh my God. Now, as I had lately met my school friends and I was just putting in an audio message and they said, come on, man, can you speak faster? I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, that, that's so funny, actually. But you know, faster, Kato, you don't have to do anything. No, now on WhatsApp, you have the uh, option of a 1x, 1.5x, and 2x. 2X. So my so my, kid, my kiddo listens to my messages on 2x. I can tell you the oh current. <laughs> <laughs> the art of communication is lost. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's funny. So, Dr. Devan, uh, tell me about the one skill that you like the most about yourself. I mean, you know, I, I think the skills that you have, this is a great, very difficult choice to make. But yeah, if you could still tell us um, one skill or maybe the top three that you are 
most that you like the most about you? I think I I uh, I don't know whether it's a skill or whether it's a quality. Um, I do well in adversities. Wow. Okay. So would you say in stress you would kind of um, not stress if, if the situation is adverse? I, I still put in my uh, best component of self-belief that I will tie it over it. Wow. Amazing, amazing. Um, so, Dr. Dhaban, now, when it comes to being a strong human, what does being a strong human mean to you? And what are the traits and qualities that you think a strong human should possess? I think the most important thing to be a strong human is to find that contentment in yourself. Mm -hmm. All traits that we explore, envision, are desirous of. Eventually, I think the journey of life is about contentment. Mm -hmm. Your contentment will lead you to happiness. And love as the highest emotion form of happiness. So that trait for me is contentment. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, uh, Dr. Devan, now a few final words that you want to tell the viewers any advice or anything that you want to share? I would say that. Uh, Maybe I should say that in Hindi. Yeah, please, please do. I translate it for you in English. <laughs> no, I do understand Hindi. <laughs> so please, please go ahead. I rose yahan se guzarta hoon. Kaun dekhta hai? Each day I pass by this route. Who looks at me? Main kal jo na yahan se guzrunga. Kaun dekhega? Tomorrow I don't pass by this route. Maybe nobody would have missed my presence. This is true life. We come here, we have a journey. We may be noticed, we may not be noticed. And we may do deeds which are invincible and the best deeds. But in the short-lived journey of life, and in shorter memories of the people around us, you may not even be a story anymore. It's an old story. Yet, in your lifetime, try to do deeds where at least you feel that you did something selflessly. Thank you. Awesome. That is so beautiful. I just love your entire story, especially. Um, you know, the fact that you told us how you did not plan a lot of things in your life. You were pretty much uh, focused on what you were doing, but things happened one after the other. And you were just one person who would look at opportunity as an opportunity and just bag it. You know, you've been, I guess, more open and... Um, they say every possibility is an opportunity. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so so I feel you have been, your personality seems to be of this person who, um, you know, if something comes by, you're like, okay, why not? You know, instead of asking why me or why should I? I think you see, when thinking. adversity comes to you back full, right. you, can, you can keep asking this question, why me hmm. and why not? So when opportunity and um, possibilities <laughs> come to you, then again, you can question why me and why not. Right. Absolutely. When it's an adversity, you still work hard to tide over it. When it's an opportunity, you should also work to get it. I, I think it's just a trait. Perfect. Perfect. That was just amazing. Amazing. I think um, what I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you are an amazing inspiration to so many, so many women especially when, you know, the way you're balancing things and the way, uh, you know, you're taking on so many responsibilities and opportunities 
side by side and not giving up what is most important to you while exploring everything else and telling yourself that you can do it every single day i think that's an amazing quality the one and, more thing which is really important to me is my family right because eventually uh, every uh, good bad low high crescent troughs who do you share it with right your family your family or your closest friends your near and dears so um, it's not just the role of a woman to nurture a family but it is also about sense of belonging and if they say there's a pie chart and there are various quadrants to it then one quadrant significantly is your family right absolutely that is so true that is so true thank you so much doctor i mean i just enjoyed enjoyed this um you know this discussion and i i kept having so many visualizations and so many ideas uh, while talking to you so thank you so much for your time it's just brilliant and thank you for keeping that crown on for so long and it looks so pretty on you you've been carrying it so gracefully and mujhe to nahi pata ki how are you managing to talk so fluently and so beautifully while that is on your head and you're not worried about it so i i guess aapne kuch hi dino mein practice bahut zyada kar li hai interview de de ke and you know uh, having it around for so long official representations of the pageant um, have been recommended to be in the crown and uh, uh, i'm just honoring that practice Also, uh, they say uneasy lies the head which wears the crown, but this one is not uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I I love your faces and your quotes. Yeah, this has been amazing, and I'm sure people uh, would want to come back also and watch uh, this. So yeah, thank you, thank you so much. So to the viewers, um, just like this, every episode we bring someone amazing, and I'm sure you have enjoyed this uh, discussion that we just had. with Dr. Devan and um, she's a true inspiration thank you so much April for having me on your show and thank you Sainath as well thank you so much uh, i will just 